Welcome in, welcome in everybody. Oh my gracious goodness, goodness gracious me, oh my. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. Oh, let me tell you, let me tell you. Come on in, come on in. Could grab a seat. Listen, if you need to run to the kitchen, please do because I got my popcorn waiting. Oh, it's a wait because we're going to hear. We're going to hear audio listen oh my goodness just passing says not lord not on my thursday oh my goodness girl what is going on listen without further ado we might as well just go ahead and jump into the topic i am your host Tanya tko i am a self-love specialist and we cover these stories so that we can see the self-love lessons in there for us i am currently working on a book called 101 ways we self-abuse and every time we watch a video, I am going to quiz you all on which way it is that self-abuse is happening in the video. So now, oh my gracious, there's two self-abuse lessons in this video I need you to pay attention to, right? So listen, oh me, oh my, me, oh my, me, oh my, oh my God, Cassie allegedly submitted Oh, she allegedly submitted Kim Porter's burner phone. You know, they say they killed her. They say the woman was murked. Oh, my gracious. They said she was murked. But before she was murked, she had a burner phone that no one knew about. And Diddy has been operating under the reins. Oh, my goodness. Under the guise. He even got a doggone humanitarian of the world award last year. Some foolishness. Whatever it was they did. Man of the year. Person of the world. Whatever they did, he won some award. And Cassie and her husband, who had been sitting quietly, I guess it disturbed her in her spirit. And she came out and she outed the man. But my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, people is going down with him. Let me, because look, there's some stuff we're going to need to see. So let me get my, my glasses out. Me oh, me oh, my, look, what do we have here? Oh, mama, oh, Jakes, what have you done? You see, they want to talk about women. We're going to play that video from him where he was talking about women. Throw your boxing gloves in the air. I'm your host, Tanya TKO. And I'm in the process of making a community for us to commune at behind the scenes. So don't you worry. I got you. Whoa. Look. My goodness. Oh, let me see what we have here. Oh, I might have to go grab my pearls. I might have to go grab my pearls because, goodness, what have we here? What is going on? My, 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 my. So this is a TikToker by the name of Just Nene. And Just Nene dropped the hammer down on these men's last night. Oh, let's, without further ado, let's just keep going because, oh, I got to get my earpiece in because this right here is a doozy. It's a doozy. Text notification squad, I see you all running deep in the house. And don't you worry, listen. I'm creating a way for us to be able to really have community coming in 2024. It's going to take three months to implement. And for those of you who like my lipstick color, <laughs> this is going to be available coming soon. I finally got the barcodes ready. I finally got the labels for the bottom ready. I am going to switch around two of the names because this, the name was originally Kiss Me There. But I want Kiss Me There to be for the glossy one. Because, you know, when you get kissed there, it be glossy and wet. Oh, if the kiss is right, if the kiss is right. But nonetheless, nonetheless, we're here to talk about Jake. But I just want you all to know what is coming for this new year. But, oh, me, oh, my, oh, my, oh, me, oh, me, oh, my, oh, me, oh, my. Let's let's get let's get into it. Let's get let's woo child. Let's let's get mm, mm, mm. let's hear what they have to say. Mm. Before I say anything, this is allegedly. Ain't nobody gonna catch me slipping, okay? Mm. Okay. So allegedly, Cassie has turned over evidence to the feds. Yes, to the feds. 
She has turned over videotapes, a USB drive, and Kim Porter's burner phone. Now, there is also an alleged email out saying a plethora of other things that include T.D. Jakes with mm. Diddy. I'm going to let y'all listen to it. I'm not going to say nothing else. It's here. Yo, bro, Cassie has turned over substantial amounts of evidence to the feds. I'm told that after Cassie had a long conversation with Blank, I have to protect this person. They're going through a lot right now. And her lawyers, she finally was convinced to give up the videotapes and audio recordings that contain footage of S parties and other private gatherings that feature some pretty powerful and prominent people. And get this, she even gave up a burner phone and USBs that belong to Kim Porter with incriminating evidence against Diddy. I'm told that there are a slew of artists, politicians, and entertainers that are about to be exposed and arrested for HT. And I'm paraphrasing there, okay? Mm -hmm. HT. For those of you who don't know what HTN is, the first word is humming. The last word is when there's a lot of cars lined up. Uh, you, you know, you know what that's called, but apparently there's lots of words we can't say online no more. But you know what it is. H10. I'm told that Cassie's husband played a significant role in getting Cassie to turn over the evidence. It's to my understanding that Cassie felt that by exposing the truth, it would also make her look like a filthy more. And I'm paraphrasing there because some of the videos she turned in, it shows her getting number one on number one. OK, guys, I'm paraphrasing mm. again and committing more disgusting acts that she was forced to do. I'm also told that multiple male escorts corroborated the fact that T.D. Jakes have slept with multiple men at Diddy's parties and abroad. And they refer to him as being a power bottom. Wow. It's also been said that a young male has acquired a lawyer to represent him as he is set to sue Jakes for an incident that took place when he was just years old. It's been said that the young man was forced to perform sloppy toppy. And I'm paraphrasing here, guys. You can actually put two and two together to understand what I'm trying to say. Oh. It's been said that the man's family were members of the Potter's house, but left the church in 2015. According to multiple church insiders, the parents were paid off to keep quiet. The guy's a grown mm. man now and is seeking his own justice. It's been said that the young man doesn't even deal with his parents even to this day because they took hush money. According to Pastor Blank, and I have to protect this pastor, Bishop Jakes is about to get railroaded and all of his dirt will be exposed. That's why the bishop has quietly lawyered up. He sees his fall from grace coming. Just don't look good for nobody. And when I say nobody, I mean nobody. Hollywood is being turned upside down. Jeffrey upside Epstein's down. list is going to come out. If this is actually true, this list is going to come out. And we already know T.D. Jakes is caught up with the other shit, allegedly being the person that is um, messing with Christian Keys. Everybody's saying it's either allegedly T.D. Jakes or allegedly Tyler Perry. It's mm. either one of them. But, oh my God, if this is true... Buckle up, because next year, 2024, y'all better get y'all bingo cards out, because it's going to get real. Before I say anything, this is allegedly. Ain't nobody going to catch me slipping, okay? Okay. Listen. Woo, so, you know black women was over T.D. Jakes from the time that he made them statements last, uh, was last year? Mm-hmm. When he made them statements last summer about women being raised up to be men, because then how sin was brought into the, the, the Garden of Eden by Eve because Adam was not meant to uh, get received from a woman and all this other stuff. So without further ado, I know you all want to hear that because if you didn't see it, you want to see it here. Oh, Jakes, what have you done? What have you done? What have you done? What have you done? Take a listen. Mm. If Adam... Because you know, before he gets started, you know they say that so many of these men are angry at women and say all of this disparaging stuff about women because they really kind of feel a way about men. And then now all of a sudden we're hearing that he's a power bottom. Be you know what? Let's, let's, let's take the definition of power bottom first. Let's, let me show you. So I Googled it right before we went live on all of these platforms. And so let's, let's read men's health. Men's health is reporting. Power bot. Ew, why they got this peach here looking like this? That, that lets you know right there. That, 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 that gives you an idea right there. Oh my, how vulgar, vulgar with a big old hole there. 
So it says you've probably heard the term pillow princess, a.k.a. star fishing to describe an sexual partner who likes to lie back and receive pleasure in the bedroom and do not do much else. But did you know there's a term to describe the opposite scenario, i.e. a man who likes to run the show even when he's on the receiving end? In the queer community, these men are known as power bottoms. They're the kind of S partners who don't just lie there. They're controlling the tempo, pushing back. Okay, I'm adding that myself, but let's continue. Controlling the tempo of S along with the depth of the penetration, they're telling the partner to switch positions. Oh, me, hold on, I need to... Oh, me, oh, me, oh, my. Lord, what do we have here? Lord, what do we have here? Telling the partner to switch positions. No way do they wait for the top to tell them what to do. No. They're there. There's a difference between being penetrated and being submissive. And that even when you're on the receiving end of intercourse, you can still be the more dominant partner. Note. This is not the same as topping from the bottom. A bad practice in BDSM where the submissive partner turns the agreed upon power dynamic upside down. No, no. Outside of the bedroom, power bottoms often pride themselves in being able to take the biggest imaginable, the biggest eggplant imaginable. I mean, you can look up the article for yourself. I'll put it larger on the screen so that you can see apparently some people like it large. Nonetheless, my, my, take the, 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 the biggest, wait, wait, where was I? Oh, my goodness. The whole difference between being penetrated and the you, you more dominant, okay, being some, and the even, power, okay, okay, outside of the bedroom, power bottoms, oh, often pride themselves in being able to take the biggest, eggplant imaginable at a moment's notice. You might also find them in the gym working on their squat game so they can have a big, as big a butt as possible. This is where we are if you want to read along with me. That said, oh my gracious, I, where's, where's, my, where's my fan? Because this right here is too much. This is too much. My Lord have mercy. This is what they saying about T.D. Jakes. Oh, my gracious goodness. Oh, my gracious goodness. All right. Let's continue. Let's continue. I can't believe this is what we're reading. Lord have mercy. How did we get here? How did we get here? Oh, Lord, somebody's about to vomit. Gracious goodness. As big a butt as possible. That said, you can have a little slice of cake back there and still be a power bottom. Of course, of course. Being a power bottom is about S and a certain je ne sais quoi. Everybody's definition of power bottom is different, says Evan Goldstein, founder and CEO of Bespoke Surgical. An anal surgery practice, but... No matter how you define it, why do they need an anal surgeon? Is that to repair it or to make it wider? Lord, Lord. Oh, and Kitty Jake looks like he got some big buns. Too. He looks like he got some big buns. Oh. oh, no matter how you define it, that ass will need to be able to handle a lot. Like withstanding extensive forces. See, I told you, pushing it back aggressively. Extensive forces, multiple sessions, multiple daily, daily, weekly, and multiple partners. Sometimes it means being ready to open up wherever and whenever your partner wants. Oh, my gracious, what's happening? What is happening out here? Oh, my gracious. Well, well T.D. Jakes, what you done got yourself caught up into, allegedly. Adult performer and self-proclaimed power bottom, Richard J.M.V. 32, the link is not safe for work, 
says that being a power bottom is more about presence. A power bottom isn't as easy to describe unless you're talking about energy, he says. There's an energy you can always see and feel from the power bottom present. Push it back. Push it back. Oh, oh, oh me, oh my. The way JMV describes it, being a power bottom is really a state of mind. It's knowing that it's a GD gift to be inside your bunghole. And let, let me show you where we're at. Here we go. So that you all can keep up. And when you decide to have S with someone, it is their privilege to all the power bottoms out there. Don't get caught up with people that don't deserve your power, JMV adds. Oh, my gracious, what's going on in these streets? Being a power bottom is definitely something you can learn, as Paul 55 explains. While I knew I was a bottom in my teens, it wasn't until I was well into my 20s that I began to understand my body and how it worked. Only then was he able to become the self-reclaimed power bottom he is today. Paul's power bottom transformation coincided with finding my voice during S. It was then that I realized how powerful I was as a bottom, he says. In order to find your voice and become a power bottom, Paul recommends speaking in the mirror during solo play or practicing being verbal during S with a trusted partner. Get used to saying exactly what you want to do. What you want to be done to you, there's power in the words, he adds. Oh, my gracious, what is going on in these streets? What? Somebody's saying, please. Oh, my Lord. I'm just reading what the thing says. S-Toys have helped Paul, too. He says, literally, hundreds of S-Toys that have taught me so much over the years. Using prostate massagers. Didos. Just put the L in there. And butt plugs can teach you how to clench your hole around the toy so you can squeeze your mm around your partner's mm. But it's also about learning what feels good for your body, specifically how to reap the most pleasure out of backdoor penetration because you can't be a power bottom unless you're totally into it. And you can't be totally into it unless you know how to hit all your feel-good spots. Oh, my goodness. Being a power bottom is an undeniable source of pride for many queer men. There are tons of stereotypes associated with bottoms, such as being more effeminate, submissive, and emotionally needy. Being a power bottom bucks those stereotypes and shows that the bottom can be dominant, commanding, and masculine too. Another bonus to being a power bottom, unlocking the ability to experience maximum pleasure, as Paul puts it. Power bottoms have the best whole body orgasms when they truly feel themselves and enjoy. Listen, oh my goodness. The power bottoms are out there pushing it back. Listen, you know what it is. Get up and push it back. Get up and push it back. That's what I'm saying. Get up and push it back for me now. Come on. Push it back. Power bottom. Push it back. Power bottom. Come on. Power. I don't know what's going on out here. 
I don't know what's happening in these streets. Oh, my goodness. Nonetheless, and lesser than none, let us take a quick, a quick break where we are going to move. Get up out of your seat. Do your power bottom moves right now because you're going to have to, you're going to have to learn. So everybody get up and just push back, push back. Get up out of your seat. We're going to take a movement break right now because we got to keep it flexible. Not that type of flexible, but keep your body flexible. Do some bends, some squats. Not those type of squats. Don't squat down on nothing. Just listen, just get up out your seat. <laughs> yes, walk back. That's what I'm talking about. Get up out your seat and let's, let's go from there. We're gonna be back in two minutes. There's gonna be some codes on the screen. If you want your comment read on the screen, give to the, it's to the Cash App PayPal. You can support the broadcast. And when we come back, we're gonna hear from TD Jakes as well as, as well as we're going to hear from Cassie's friend about some of the stuff that Diddy has allegedly done. So get up out of your seat and let's get this party started right now. Oh my, 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 my. Woo! Oh, power, come on! that is going through or that T.D. Jakes has some stuff going on with him. Christine sent $20 and says, thanks for the laugh, girl. You're not supposed to be laughing. You're supposed to be doing your workout. That was our workout, damn. 
That was our workout thing. People supposed to be doing your workout. Man, Aura sends two dollars and says for the law. Wait, for the power. Oh, wait, not for the power. Bottom, not for the power. And Harvey sent sixteen dollars and says, "OMG, Tanya, no mas, no mas, no mas." No mas. <laughs> Rakaya sends five dollars and says. <laughs> Making my son clutch his pearls. Wait, how old is your son? Please tell me your son is an adult, please. <laughs> little children should not be watching this. Please tell me your son is an adult. Please. Oh, gosh. And Lakeisha sends a dollar. Thank you, Lakeisha. I appreciate that. Oh, my gracious goodness alive. So now we're going to get into T.D. Jake's. And the comments that he made, then we're going to listen to Cassie's best friend talk about some sad stuff that she saw and, and witnessed. Not her best friend, but a friend. <clears throat> but yeah. Man, this is, this is terrible. This is terrible. This is terrible. All right, so let's get T.D. Jakes up on the screen because he was trending last year for making these statements about women. And women didn't appreciate it too much. And if, there's, if there are other statements that he's made about women, because I think there was something more egregious that he said, please let me know because I, um, <clears throat> because I will play that in another video. I will play that in another video. But this right here, it's gotten out of hand. These people, they think that they can do any and everything. Who? All right, let's get this man here, right there in the middle. If Adam had not allowed Eve to pour into him, sin would have never come into the world. What is he talking about? If Adam had not allowed Eve to pour into him, sin wouldn't have come into the world? It's like I don't even understand how they're conflating the two different things, like, you see, and remember, when I make these videos about how the church is anti-woman, that there's a lot of anti-woman sentiment, how did, Eve didn't call, first of all, who still believe in this story anyway, but nonetheless, it, let's, let's, let's hear his rationale. So women brought sin into the world because she poured into Adam. If, if the story, well, it's not true, but if the story were true, Adam ate the apple because he wanted to. He, he, didn't nobody force that being to eat the apple? Stop it. If Adam had not allowed Eve to pour into him, sin would have never come into the world. Sin came into the world because Adam broke the order. We were not designed to receive from women. Your self-esteem is compromised when you have to ask your wife for lunch money. I'm not saying you got to be rich. This is just so ridiculous. I just, I, I, I'm going to finish playing it. I just, men receive from women all the time. They receive of our bounty, of our gifts. The earth is feminine. We receive of earth's bounty and gifts. This is what I'm saying. Mother Gaia is tired and it's shaking these people loose. This is unbelievable. <clears throat> I'm not saying you gotta be uh, famous. I'm saying that you have got to be the one who pours in, not the one who takes out. When Adam started eating out of his wife's hand, sin came in because the divine order was broken. This breaks all sociological order that the culture we're living in now. Because we are raising up women to be men. And you are not applauded for your femininity. You are applauded in the contemporary society by how tough, rough, nasty, mean, aggressive, hateful, possessive you are, and you are climbing the corporate ladder, but we are losing our families. Oh. 
I know you can buy your own car. I know you can buy your own house. But until you create a need that I can pour into, I have no place in your life. So stop coming home bragging to me about how much you don't need me and wonder why I shy away. If you're not needed, you ain't needed. Go shy away. If you ain't needed, go. It's like the, these people are taking your existing and the fact that they are not bringing value, they're taking that as you doing something to them. <laughs> Somebody just stopped it, Tanya. It's true. <laughs> we keep talking about rough and aggressive, but this is what we know or what we've heard. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk back to me this morning. The conversation has become, let's prove to the men how, in the, how dispensable they are. And it is born out of pain because we hurt you. No, well, and betrayed is. you. And lied to you. And cheated to you. And you became like you became out of pain. Oh, Lord. <sighs> I told you they wasn't going to like this, Jesus. Oh my goodness, you want to break this down a little bit? If Adam had not allowed Eve to pour into him. He's conflating pouring into with whatever fantastical situation he's talking about that existed in the Garden of Eden with an apple. Pouring into a person and there being some deity or some deity that's saying, look, don't eat of this tree of knowledge and him going and eating of the tree. That's a, there's, there are differences between pouring into. Pouring into is when you help to give a person energy, love. Um, what do you call this? When you pump somebody up with words, when you're trying to assist them, sometimes you pour into them with money, time, attention. That's what pouring into is. I don't see how this relates to an alleged apple. That's the part that's just very strange to me. Sin would have never come into the world. So he's, now he's conflating this alleged sin coming into the world with the actions of a woman to a man and the man participating in some actions. So... What? I, see, I just, I don't believe in quote unquote sin. I just believe that things are as they are. There are things that get you where it is that you want to be, that get the world where it needs to be, and things that don't. There's so many people that are calling so many different things sin. So now sin came into the world because of an apple. So I don't want to say it, but I'll say it. So this God of the Bible did not intend for there to be more people. But then we also have talked about Lilith, haven't we? Go look up the story of Lilith. Apparently, Lilith was not down for Adam's program. Then Adam decided to, I guess, or Eve was quote-unquote created for Adam, and then now here's this apple situation. and uh. Sin came into the world because Adam broke the order. <clears throat> We were not designed to receive from women. So the thing is that women create. Women are bountiful. Men, they siphon, they suck, they, they bleed us dry. Women produce children. Women produce fruit. The fruit is feminine. The fruit is what contains the seed. This is why we've been listening to these ignoramuses for so long that they're calling semen the seed. Semen isn't the seed. The seed is in the middle of the fruit. The fruit is from the feminine flower. The male flower is the pollinator. The female flower is the one that creates the fruit. That's the one that has the seed. The seed or the seeds. So it's like we've been listening to these people for far too long. Come on. So now he's saying that we were not meant to receive from the feminine. The feminine is bounty. The earth is bountiful. 
fruits are bounty. Come on. We receive from the earth, from the feminine. It gives. <sighs> I don't know who helped him write this sermon. This is just unbelievable. Your self-esteem is compromised when you have to ask your wife for lunch money. This is pride right here. Number one, yes, for lunch money, if you don't have money for lunch, this is a problem. First of all, if you all are a unit, then there is no your money and my money. The F is he talking about? Are we talking about a marriage or what are we talking about? It's like, why would you be asking for lunch money in a unit in which you two have an agreement about how the finances are, are created in that unit? If a person, if his, if a person's self-esteem is diminished because they are because they need money for an expense, money that the union created. Is it that he's not contributing? So the issue is not that he is dipping into the community pot. The issue is that he's not putting into that pot. So rather than the sermon being about the fact that he's not putting into the pot. So if his self-esteem is lowered, it's not because of something that the woman is doing. It's because of whatever feeling he has about what his actions mean to him. This is part of the reason that I cannot and I will not ever be religious ever again. That spirituality really does it for me because spirituality talks about more than just this external that we have and these small ego human issues. Like what is the true issue that is going on here? Now, yes, women are hypergamous. Yes. Women like to date up and be with people who have more resources. This fills us. Yes. By and large, right? Everybody's different. Everybody has different uh, driving forces. However, when two become one, that union has to make the decisions for what is right for their union. And if he's feeling a way, it's because of his ego. Why is this preacher not talking about ego? I'm not saying you got to be rich. I'm not saying you got to be uh, famous. I'm saying you got to be something if you got to ask for damn lunch money. The hell? How much is a sandwich for lunch money and some chips? You acting like a boy. Why is, a per why is he asking for lunch money? Why is it that he doesn't have money for lunch? Like these are two different things. Asking for, a asking or making decisions with your wife about large purchases is a lot different than the pittance of trying to figure out if you could get a sandwich for the day. Like, this doesn't make any sense to me. That you have got to be the one who pours in, not the one who takes out. Now, look, I agree. Pour in, Mother Effa, pour in. However, in a relationship, both people give into the relationship and both people receive from the relationship. I remember when I was living in my car, all of these friends that I had poured into, that I had showed up for, that I had given to, that I had given of myself to, when I fell down and I was weak and I was hobbled and I was humbled, those people that I poured into, They lifted me up when I was weak. They held my back straight when I was not strong. They poured into me when I needed it. And I realized that in healthy relationships, that there's a seesaw that happens. There will be times that you are up and they are down, and you reach your hand and you pull them. And there will be times that you are down and they are up and they've reached their hand and they pull you. This is a healthy relationship. I don't know what it is that he's talking about. There are different ways in which in a romantic relationship, men and women pour in. And then when it's time to make a deposit, they withdraw. But if a person is withdrawing and they've not put in, let's talk about that issue. Let's not talk about how you're not supposed to receive. Okay. So when, a per when your woman goes to give you a hug, you're going to elbow her off of you? When she's 
cooking dinner, making a meal, or even producing life inside her loins. What are you going to football punt the baby back up into the uterus or back into the hospital? What are you going to slap the plate down and be like, no, I shall not receive. I'm going to do everything. I'm, I'm going to come on. Healthy relationships have give and take in different ways. The fact is that he's focusing on money and finances and even in a healthy heterosexual romantic relationship. There may be times, listen, marriage, let's talk about marriage because once you all have signed that count, that contract and allegedly have become one, right? There will be times that the husband is down and the, and the wife is up, especially in this seesaw economy that we have today. The difference is who are you? Who have you built yourself up to be over these years? Are you a constant taker or do you give? How many, how many people in here have been married or are married now? Women, if your husband falls, are you not there to be like, listen, okay, we got this together. But he's talking about when, when Eve gave him the apple and, 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 he, gave, and he gave and the sin had come into. Come on, man. What are you talking about? Come on. It's like, it's, is it a marriage or not? Are you on your own or not? When Adam started eating out of his wife's hand, sin came in because the divine order was broken. Men eat out of women's hands all the time. Women are the primary, primary ones who make food. Are they not? Come on. Are they not? Are women not supposed to cook now? This breaks all sociological order that the culture we're living in now. What does this culture have to do with... See, the thing is that we have this pie in the sky. And this is a married man. We have this pie in the sky view of what a relationship is supposed to be. A relationship is a, is a union between two people. That's it. And those two people make up the rules for that relationship. Sociological order, societies are made up of people. Just because society says that something is a certain way, this is just our society. There are many different societies all around the earth, and there are different societies that have existed in different eras. Because we are raising up women to be men. I don't understand. What is your definition of a damn man? Your definition of a man is somebody who what has money brings money I, I i don't understand a woman could never be a man even on her best day come for me if you choose to the xx is different than that xy we know that that y is a broken x there is nothing that a woman can do that can make her a man we are not raising up women to be men, but there are ways in which men have failed society themselves their families etc however however Oh, oh, I, I, there's so much that I can say, but I want to get through this because I want to the, play the video from Cassie's friend. Go ahead and thumbs up the video, please. There's 700 people here on YouTube, 200 on Facebook, two on X, one on Twitch. Hey! I'm happy that you all are here. Thank you. Thumbs up the video. Share the video so that other people can see this madness too. So apparently, T.D. Jakes is being called a power bottom by information that has been submitted allegedly over to the feds. Mm. And you are not applauded for your femininity. You are applauded in the contemporary society by how tough, rough, nasty, mean, aggressive, hateful, possessive you are. And Okay, let's, let's address that because I feel that there is some merit in what it is that he's saying, right? But he's missing many steps. Throughout the ages, women have not been respected for the things that have been asked of women to give in the name of quote-unquote femininity. They've not been respected for the meals and the cooking and the child rearing. They've been told, oh, this is your duty, and I wipe my ASS with you and what it is that you do. Men respect these things. Here, here, let's, let's, let's hear. What is it? Hateful, possessive you are, and hateful, nasty, mean. 
about how tough, rough, nasty, mean, aggressive, hateful, possessive you are. Men applaud those things. Those are the things that men respect among themselves. Getting to the top by any means, might is right. And what has happened, let me peep you to game for those of you who did not know. I'm going to let you know right now. What happened is that what women was doing in the house was not respected. In fact, it was denigrated and disrespected. Men respect certain characteristics among themselves. What happened is women realized, listen, I'm doing all of these things. Women's shadow labor is worth over $10.9 trillion annually. Breastfeeding alone takes up more hours than a, or almost as many hours as a full-time job for the, during a year. Let me say that again so you can hear it. Breastfeeding alone takes up as almost breastfeeding alone takes up almost as many hours as a full-time job per year. And so these are things a woman feeding your offspring through her body was not something that was protected and respected. Instead, they were stepped on and had their asses wiped on these women. And women were left when the men's whims felt like it, he would get up and go find another family or get up, just don't come back home. Go put up a number one. If you have an older family member whose husband just got up one day, never got a divorce, never said he wasn't happy, just decided that he was going to make another family, just got up and did not come back home. One girl commented on my video that her grandfather left her grandmother with nine children. This woman didn't have the ability to doggone work. He left her with nine kids. So what ended up happening is she had to find a damn way. He didn't give a damn about them kids or her. And she's not the only one. There are scores, hundreds, thousands of stories. So how many generations does it take for a woman to learn? Now, nobody should be nasty. No one should be evil and all those other things. But men have shown that they don't respect what it is that you do. They respect power. They respect money. They respect the one who has the money, makes the power, and makes the rules. This is what they respect. So what women have done is that they've just gone ahead and said, well, you know what? I'm going to make my own money. You don't respect what it is that I'm doing. You want me to work 24 hours a day when you just have to work eight. You want to come home and not contribute to the home, though I've been working from sun up till sundown. Then you come home at sundown, and my job increases because you come home. The data shows that when women live with men, this is why there are so many people who are pushing for separate household marriages right now. Come on. The data shows that even when the women are working, that her housework increases by over 25%. His goes down when he moves in. So hers goes up. He, he just, he's not sharing the household duties. So what happened is women don't want to be sitting around disrespected, unprotected. This is what happened. Women weren't protected. And you are climbing the corporate ladder, but we are losing our families. This is the part that is troubling men right there. You're losing your families because of what you did, not because she's climbing the corporate ladder. You're losing your families because women didn't want to be sitting around like, like a stool pigeon. They didn't want to be sitting around there like prey at home to the men who were victimizing them. They decided to let their dreams be heard. A woman is not a damn maid that you go and you just pick up from someone's family. A woman has hopes, dreams, like... A, Maybe she wants to climb that corporate ladder, not because of anything that has to do with a man, but be maybe because she has ideas inside of her that the world needs. How about that? It's like these men think that everything that a woman does is about them. So you're losing your families because it's not an attractive prospect to put yourself in a medically, in a medically induced state in which you and that offspring can lose their lives, especially if you're a black woman in America where going into the hospital to give birth is one of the most dangerous places. Where going into the hospital to give birth is one of the most dangerous places for a human being. If you're a black woman and pregnant, going into the hospital is 
and can be a damn life sentence for you where you may not come out. It's not an attractive prospect to bring children into the world for you for what? They say, okay, you have this baby, now you're worth less. You got less worth in the dating market once they freaking leave you and leave you saddled with these kids, right? They are preaching to other men not to take up single mothers. Okay, so then women do not want to become single mothers. They know if worse comes to worse, they're not going to be able to find another man. So they are going and they are doing what it is that they need to do to keep their wombs clear and free. And what these men are upset about is that, yeah, they're losing families. Births are down all over the world. They say by 2030, 45% of women between the ages of 25 and 45 will be single and child free. This is what they're afraid of. They're afraid of their, their offspring not coming into the world because they realize that women control this. We control the landscape of every human that is here. And they don't like that. So now they're trying to guilt you and trying to, trying to you know what, this is, that's a video for another day. I want to just continue to talk about him being a power bottom. Let's just get through this real quick. I know you can buy your own car. I know you can buy your own house. But until you create a need that I can pour into, I have no place in your life. Okay, so let's talk about that real quick. I know you can buy your own car. I know you can buy your own this until you create a need. Why would a person create a need? Why are you not useful? Why don't you show up in such a way that there is a need for you? Why should a woman have to create? And then if the need is financial, then you're SOL because men are not keeping up with girls. Men are not keeping up with women. They're not keeping, boys are not keeping up with girls in school. They're saying like for every, for every two women, there's one man enrolled in college right now. You're not going to be able to make the money that you need to. So what are you doing? Instead of these people talking to these men about ways to get themselves educated, get themselves gainfully employed so that they can be at least a financial asset because we know that many of these people are spiritually and psychologically defunct. Why are we not talking about the real value that human beings have? And it's not financial because if financial is your only value as a man, you ain't going to have much, not in this society where women are, are working. No. So stop coming home bragging to me about how much you don't need me and wonder why I shy away. I think that this is something that, he, that needs to be spoken to men. That sentence needs to be really turned around. Number one, anybody inside of a relationship with somebody who's bragging about how much they don't need you, please leave that relationship. That isn't the relationship for you. That's number one. Number two, it was women who were at home working 24 hours a day, married and made slaves who were there, who were disrespected. Okay, you don't respect this job, then do it your effing self. It was men who showed that they did not, quote unquote, need women. All right. So even now, men are talking about how they don't want relationships. This is by and large the way it goes in the damn black community. Men don't want to be in relationships in the black community. Look and see what's about to happen. Jamie Foxx's daughter, Corinne, has herself now engaged to a white man, and black men are going crazy because while black men were leaving their households running after Becky, they left the hen house unattended. And now the hens have gone out and they decided to try to tell you nobody wants you. Oh, these men don't want you. You must be mad. We are the blueprint. Want us, they do. Oh, yes, absolutely. They've always wanted us. And now you've left the hen house unattended while you out there in the street creating broken homes out of your preferences. And you think black women are going to sit here forever? No, they want you to just stay there like sitting duck. That's what they want, but no, it's not happening like that. Oh, y'all ain't gonna talk back to me this morning. I'm talking back to you right here, sir. The conversation has become, let's prove to the men how, in the, how dispensable they are. That's not the conversation, sir. The conversation over millennia has been these men trying to prove how much they don't really need women outside of their maid services. 
They tell you over and over that you don't matter, that you are nothing but your external beauty and your youth, something that is fleeting, that there's nothing about your personality, your energy, your vibration, your cultivation as a human being. There is nothing about any of that that matters to them. All they care about is the commodification of your youth and beauty, that they can just switch you out like popping off one head from one doll to the next. When my sister was little, she loved Barbies. And this was around the time that Barbie started having all of these different races of Barbies and all these different, everything that you could imagine, all different types of hairstyles and different friends and all of that. My, my sister would create all these cute little clothes and cre do the hair and all this other stuff. And I remember she had had this outfit on this one Barbie that didn't match with the hairstyle and she wanted that from a different Barbie. So all she did was just pop one head off the other and pop the other head off and interchange them. They were interchangeable. <laughs> Put up the number two if men have constantly posited to you that women are interchangeable. They can't tell the difference between you and another woman. These are the ones who have societally, all throughout our history, let it be known that you are just a baby-making machine, even in the Bible. Even in the Bible. If your wife couldn't have children, oh, you're going to go our word. They, they didn't say it was that, but if you have a maid who is there who is dependent on your wages and she doesn't have anywhere to go, and you have authority and power over her, she cannot consent because she does not have the ability to not consent. That is... That is S.A. So even in the Bible, if your wife couldn't have children, then you just go lay with the maid, and then now the maid is your child? No. 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 So they have been letting it be known you're just a factory for kids and a person to cook food and sweep and clean up the damn house and take care of his estrogal needs. That's what you are. They don't care about your personality. They don't give a damn. This is why they're trying to marry at 12. This is why they're trying to get as young as they can. Oh, 12 is a little extreme for you. 16 for sure is the push. They are trying to softly push in the idea, oh, 18 to 25, then it's 18 to 21. They're saying by 25, you've gone to hit the wall. Now they done lowered it down to 18. Now Pearl and her disgusting self is talking about 16-year-olds because this is what she's hearing from the men. Then they have these statements out there that if they're, if, if it's, carpet on the something that if it's just like Easter egg hunting something that that if there's if there's grass on the field then you can you can lay your eggs in it or something like that some foolishness it's just nasty just nasty so they don't care they want you with as little personality as possible instead of trying to figure out a way for men to be in union and communion with 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 women who also work, they're trying to figure out a way to have men make themselves needed financially. Unfortunately, by and large, men are not needed in relationship for financial reasons. So now, listen, because that was your one trick pony, that was your stick. So now that you're not needed financially, what other ways can you make yourself useful? They don't want, they're not ready for that conversation because they're not ready to make changes. Even him and all his big back glory is sitting up here trying to talk about how the push has been to disrespect men. No, the push was to disrespect women. And now women are just going about their damn merry business. And it is born out of pain because we hurt you. I'm not hurt, sir. And betrayed you. Many and women have been you. betrayed and, and lied cheated and cheated you. on. Yes. And you became like you became out of pain. There's a difference between pain and necessity. There's a difference between learning. When you go out there into this world and you begin to learn and you realize what the truth is, right? When you go out there and you learn, you learn that A plus B equals C. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. How much longer were women supposed to sit here doing the same thing over and over, expecting for men to be different? So women changed. Aha. Uh -huh. And that's what they didn't bank on. Because they thought that they could keep you oppressed forever. They thought that they could keep you ignorant forever. And no, 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 no. Mentally. 
<laughs> How do I put this? The executive function of girls surpasses that of boys of the same age. We have always known this, but people haven't put two and two together. They haven't. We have always known and we've seen the way these boys were jumping around in school and acting silly and goofy. We thought it was because that's just how they were. We didn't realize until the science has come out that mentally their brains are not as developed. Their Y chromosome is a broken X. There's a reason why girls date older, and that's because the boys of the same age are not mentally as strong. Logic, reasoning, decision-making, rationale, executive function, all of these things girls surpass boys at at the same age. There's a push now from men in Congress to try to get boys to enter into school one year later so that their physical brain will have an extra year to be able to develop. They don't want to say that to you. They don't want you to know that, but this is the truth. And this is something that we have known. We started realizing the differences from when we were children. And for some reason, we continue to posit as if these beings who are lesser equipped than we are, are somehow the leaders. We have been fooled. Oh, Lord. I told you they wasn't going to like this, Jesus. All right, finally, we got through that. How much longer are we going to keep these people in power pretending as if they are equipped? There's a lot more. There are more studies that are coming out. I'm going to bring that up in, in some other videos about how women were hunters and that their bodies actually made them superior for hunting because of the estrogen. We'll talk about that because there is scientific data that shows the skeletal system the scars and wounds that women had that shown. So it's like throughout the ages, we have been duped. We've been duped. But there's another, there's another video that I want you all to see. This is a video from Cassie's friend. And Cassie's friend, how long have we been on here? Dang. Do we have enough time to go into this video? We need to take a short movement break because we are sitting down and listen. I was I was reading or I was listening to um, a podcast that was talking about the amount of time that we spend sitting each day. And so when you're watching my videos, I want you to be entertained. But you cannot sit down and not be active. Get up out of your seat. So we did the, what did, what did we do in the last, we did the buck back in the last one, right? So what should we do? You know what? Let's do a squat and hold. Let's get down in the squat and we can do little micro movements. We can even go to the side. You know, if you use a power bottom, you gotta, you gotta get down. As you see in my squat, here's my squat. So here, come on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little micro squat for two minutes and then we're going to come back, all right? Two minutes.
a dollar and says, do, do the bottom dance. Ah, ah, you talking about the pushback? Yeah, come on. We can do that while we reading the last text. I mean, the last, come on, push it back. Oh, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> and then we have Faith who sends 10, 10 and says, loving the commentary, pulls no punches. I know that's right. Listen, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, Come on, do your power bottom dance. Come on, push it back, push, back, push, back. <laughs> oh my goodness, all oh, while we standing up, we can just get a wine in. Come on, we can do a nice little wine. We don't have to, come on. Hey, all right, so listen. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and get our video geared up. Let's get our video geared up to hear from Cassie's friend. And then after that, I'm going to ask you all for the self-love lessons. There are about two lessons that I see in this story so far. So let us, you know what? Instead of doing them squats during the break, I should have got my video queued up. But, whew, but I do not have it queued up. I'm going to have to pull it up for us right now because I was really, I was doing my squats. I don't know about you. If you were doing your squats too, put up the number three because I was doing my squats because I want to be true to this, not new to this. I wanted to be true to this. So, here. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and let's refresh this. All right. And let us, take a look at this video with Cassie's, or with a friend of Cassie. Whew. So she is, she's, she's talking about what it is that she says she witnessed. So let's hear her out. Let's hear her out. Whew. Oh, this is not as big as it could be. Mm, I'm tired after those squats. I'm sweating under my arms, but that's good because you know what? We spend too much time during the day sitting. We need to get up and we need to move more. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad that there were people who were doing their squats. My underarm is sweating. I'm, I'm hot. I'm hot from doing them squats, y'all. <laughs> All right. Let's hear her. Let's hear her. Whoo, man. I don't think people understand what it's like to be traumatized by somebody famous and rich because you can't get away from them. Tiffany Red has written for the likes of Zendaya, Jason Derulo and Jennifer Hudson. In 2015, she became friends with Cassie while writing songs for her album. At that point, Cassie and Diddy had been together for nearly eight years. In a lawsuit Cassie filed last month, she detailed the abuse she says Diddy committed, including physical assault. Red says although she did not know about the alleged physical assault while working with Cassie, she did witness verbal abuse on more than one occasion. One of which took place during Cassie's 29th birthday in 2015. Red says Diddy showed up at karaoke, where Cassie and a group of friends were celebrating. 
So he had her back into the corner, and he was, like, cussing her out with his hand in, his fit, in her face. Later that night, Red, who was staying at Cassie's home, says she awoke to screaming. Oh, he's standing in the, like, living room area, and she's there. And he was, like, emotional singing, bitch. there you are. And I just was like, oh, he's talking to me. And I remember, like, I don't know if you know his, his what his voice sounds like, but, like, I felt like I was in the presence of his monster inside. And I remember, like, looking in his eyes, and I said to him, what did y'all do? Because I could see that she was, like, really sedated. That was the first time I'd ever seen her, like, high before. And then he says, tell your girl she wants some birthday <laughs> And we were like... Well, I mean, he's saying this to me, and I'm like, well, she doesn't have to have sex with you if she doesn't want to. He was upset, like, you know, I guess sh that she didn't want to do with him whatever she, whatever he wanted, I don't know. I, I don't feel like I could advocate for myself in that moment. Like, I realized, like, oh, this guy is dangerous. Red says it was only a few months ago that Cassie told her what was really going on that night in 2015, that it all stemmed from the music executive wanting her to take part in what he called a freak-off against her will. What did Cassie tell you about these freak-offs? You know, that he would hire these, like, sex workers and, like, they would have, you know, sex with her or whatever and... He would watch and tell them what to do. In her lawsuit, Cassie alleges she was forced to participate in freak-offs throughout her relationship with Diddy. Red learning recently one horrific detail from Cassie. She told me the only time he was willing to do anything or work on her music, go through any um, plans, any of that, was when she had a freak-off. So all of our music, all my work, to find out that like I spent all these years writing these songs for him to, to rape my friend to, like, is just disgusting. In the lawsuit, Cassie detailed the physical abuse she says Diddy committed, including an instance where she was put in a hotel room for days to heal. Red says Cassie recently told her about Diddy giving her a black eye before the premiere of her 2016 film, The Perfect Match. I remember one time her telling me that, I think it might have been The Perfect Match, that, that movie that she was in, and she told me that she had a black eye under her makeup. Do you believe Diddy is a dangerous person? Yes. I, do. be I don't think people then. understand what it's like to be traumatized by somebody saying that. Be careful then, as somebody said in the comments, you better be careful because I'm hearing stories about other people who have spoken out, even the person who did the autopsy for Kim Porter who said that it was a murder. This is what I'm hearing allegedly, that he said it was a murder, and then his report was disappeared and then now the man is dead kim is dead and kim's friend also is dead so be careful my dear be careful be careful because it's getting it's getting real out there it's getting real out there you know i <clears throat> i wonder i wonder if i should try to play that video in this one i don't want this video to be too long but I want, I, I, I don't want this video to be too long, but I want, um, I want to be able to play enough for, la, 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 la. let me see, I'm scrolling through now. Because I was watching this program, I was watching this thing where it was talking about all of these people, all of these people who are now deceased, who were involved with telling the truth or the alleged truth about Kim's, um, about her death. Let me see if, I, if the video is still here. Give me one second, y'all. Maybe I do maybe I do need to do a separate video about that because it was it was it was it was it was crazy because I was like, oh wow, the guy who reported on Kim Porter's death is now dead too. Like everybody around the situation was dying. I'm gonna have to find that video and then queue it up because you know sometimes videos get deleted, etc. 
Well, the thing is, you know, I have on a little bit of makeup today, so I'm like, okay, let me just get the video done now. But I, I don't have it queued up because I was only planning on talking about T.D. Jakes. But the guy, it was, it was really interesting. But I'll, I'll find it. I'll find it. I'll find it. I'll find it because I'll find it. I'll find it. I'll find it. I'll find it. All right. So listen, on that note, let's talk about what the self-love lessons are for this video because I see about two so far. I see about two. Oh, LaShawn has sent in $5 for donations. Thank you, LaShawn. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. But I'll, 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 I'll come back. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. You know what? Let me not promise that because I know how busy I am behind the scenes because we're developing an app. We're doing a lot of different things. I'm getting the lipsticks together for next year. The vitamin E finally, finally, finally is, is on its way. Finally. Because, you, listen. Finally, finally, because, you know, we're sourcing the oil from a farm and the oil has finally been processed and it's ready to be bottled. And so it's on its way to be bottled. And so there's a lot going on behind the scenes because I want to get these things for you all. So this Diddy video is going to have to wait until I'm able to come back out again. All right. So I appreciate all of you. Let's talk about the self-love lessons because that's what we need to talk about right now so let's see all right so let's talk about let's talk about what the self-love lesson is in today's video um because i saw so type out sll and i want you to talk about the self-love lesson is for you because there, there are a few different self-love lessons i want to see if you picked up on the two main ones that i picked up on in this video so let's talk let's talk let's talk let's talk let's talk let's talk Oh, you know what? I need to do the earrings as well. Let me get the vitamin E and the lipsticks done first. And then I'll come back to do the earrings because the earrings also need the earrings also need their box because the earrings were they need their box. They need their bag. Because this is how I keep my earrings in the bag. It says knockout on it. So it needs the box, it needs the bag, and it also needs a riser on the inside to hold the earrings up inside the box. So the earrings will have to wait a little bit. So I know I need you to type out SLL and then type your self-love lesson. Don't just type SLL. Type what self-love lesson, what you've learned about loving yourself from this video. SLL, what goes on in the dark will come to light, okay? Don't be concerned about what males think about you. So the self-love lesson, I want us to, to posit from what it is that we do want. So posit it from the positive standpoint not using not don't never none of those talk about what it is that you do want so if you don't want to pay attention to what males think about you who will you pay attention to so let's talk about that let's let's flip that around all right so come 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 talk 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 let's see diddy or r kelly tj is going to he double hockey six okay so Kanta is saying so remember let's not use the word not don't, never, or none of those. Let's talk about what we do want. Let's talk about what we do want. All right. I have an SLL just in general with all these exposures. Just don't want to be labeled a pick me. Go ahead and give your self-love lesson. This is, this is the time for you to talk and speak your self-love lesson. So come on. Come on. Come on. Well, there are a few self-abuse lessons in here as this, this listen, because you know I'm creating that book, 101 Ways We Self-Abuse, but on the other end of the self-abuse is what the self-love looks like. So of course, there's self-abuse lessons in here that are tied in tandem with the self-love lesson. I respect myself. I will always look within myself instead of following others, okay? Putting my intuition above all else, <laughs> okay? I want to buy a second house. What? <laughs> I, to always value my opinion more, I hear you. I will prioritize me in every aspect, fully embrace myself and love on myself. I will, let's 
see the word not is in there. So if you're not going to be male-centered, who will you be centered on? I will center myself. Let's say that. Demand respect. You know what? Listen, I am creating an app so that these comments on the screen, that they will show up from the app so that the people who are commenting are people who have registered. So this is where we're going because people talking about dookie diapers and stuff like that, I don't want that on my screen. I don't want that on my screen. Come on. I embrace my provider masculine qualities. Okay, embrace them. I will be more wise when dealing with people with traumas. Ooh, okay, okay, I hear that. My first love is me, I love that. I have created healthy boundaries for all. Yes, 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 beautiful, beautiful. So let's talk about what is the self-love lesson that I see from these videos. My self-love lesson is about living my truth, about knowing what it is that I want and living accordingly to that. Because if Jake's is a power bottom while pretending to be somebody else in the public, he's not living his truth. That's not self-love. That is self-abuse. Being in a sham marriage. Now remember, all of this is alleged. However, but if it is true, then he's in a sham marriage and he's wasting everybody's time purporting some face for the public that is different than how it is that he likes to live behind the scenes. If you want to be in these quote-unquote freak-offs, find willing participants, not people who are drugged up and beat down, like, come on, no. Second self-love lesson that I see in this is about loving and honoring my body and allowing to happen to my body that which I want, only that which I want. Because when we talk about Cassie being in these situations where she was forced into these, these freak-offs, right? At some point, we have to love ourselves enough to be like, I deserve better. If you ever find yourself saying, I deserve this in a downtrodden way, open up your eyes because you don't deserve that. You deserve much better than that. You are made in the light and the image of the most high of universal source energy. So no, if you, if you have ever found yourself saying, well, I guess this is what I deserve or I guess this is all I can get, no, 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 no. Lift up your chin, princess. Lift up your chin. You deserve so much more than that. You deserve peace, serenity, safety. You deserve to feel safe. You know what? I'm working on getting my book of affirmations back on Amazon. So look for that. Look for that. I love you all very, very much. So listen. <clears throat> Go out there and love one another. Go out there and love one another. Most importantly, love yourself. And I would say part of loving yourself is making sure that you can be honest with the people around you. If there are things going on in your relationship that you're ashamed of and you have to hide from those closest to you, it might be time to find a different relationship because the people who care about you, if they've been warning you and telling you about your partner and you don't want them to be right, so be it, so be it. If they're right, they're right. You can admit when you're wrong because staying in is more detrimental to you than, than admitting that somebody was right and having them help you get out. So I'm gonna say that. Listen, I love you all very, very much. <laughs> thank you so much, thank you, thank you, thank you.